I had a, uh, looking back through my childhood the other day, I realized that I couldn't control men. Right. In, in a physical sense. In terms of the power. As That's right. Yeah. So you could get angry at them and get them to do what you wanted. In, in, and that was different than, than having to physically overcome them and make them do what you wanted. Right. The emotional impact was actually stronger than a physical impact. Right. But it also caused me to um, want to control women, right? Mm -hmm. Because I couldn't control the men, so then I could control the women. Yeah. So then th that was another outlet of the same experience, actually. Sure. The same yep. feeling unable and not, I, and not being able to control. Can I just raise the issue of sex here, though, for, for us? The gender that we feel we can have sex with is an interesting consideration in our anger. So, for example, if we're a male and we're heterosexual, then it's the woman that we generally want to please. We know that if we get angry with them, they're highly unlikely to give us sex. Does that make sense? So the way to get sex from the woman is to please them instead, right? And so it's highly unlikely we will get overtly angry with the woman. We might be passive-aggressive with them, but we won't be overtly angry with them, generally, under those circumstances. Now, if we're a woman, a lot of the times we think the man's too demanding with sex. So what's the way to control a person who's too demanding? You want to repel them. You want to get rid of them for a bit. How do you get rid of a person easily? Just get angry with them. Yeah, they go away and you get them out of your life for a period of time, which is what you want if you feel like you're being imposed upon sexually. right? So you learn to use anger as a tool towards one gender and not the other. For, for a man who's pleasing the woman all the time, he probably has a lot of built-up feelings about that, inside, of frustration inside of himself about that. But he feels that he can't let himself be angry with the woman because if he lets himself be angry with the woman, then she's probably not going to have sex with him, right? So what she, he does there is he gets angry with men instead, sort of like a substitute. Or he may even go further than that and get angry with himself rather than get angry with anybody else. Right? So you become self-attacking, self-abusive, self-hatred, self self-loathing and so, so forth in order to prevent anybody around him feeling negative feelings from him. Obviously, if you are physically bigger, there is a temptation to use anger at times more than if you were physically smaller. Why is that? Makes sense, doesn't it? When you're physically smaller, there's a high likelihood that the bigger person might be able to overcome you. And so you don't get angry with those people. What you do is you get angry with other people. So what I see happening a lot in the spirit world with this particular problem is that, for example, there have been large groups of women historically who have been sexually abused or raped or hurt during their childhood or their adult life in a historical setting. So if you look particularly more than 100 years ago, it was commonplace for women to be raped even in their own marriages, let alone you know, be raped in day-to-day -day life. Whether they were married or single, it was common for you know, 20 to 30% of most women at that point in time to be either abused as children or raped as an adult woman in their life. So you think in, the, in one generation of women... You know, right now, the generation of women, for example, there's three billion women or, or three and a half billion women or so on the planet right now. And you think of if 30% of those women pass, so how many people, people is that? It's close to a billion women passing all at once, let's say, if they passed, all of them would have some degree of anger towards the male sexually. Can you see that? So what they choose to do after they've passed 
is they choose to dump that rage that they feel towards the male sexually on any male who does not challenge them abusively. In other words, they dump it on men who did not cause the rape and the abuse, but on rather on men who support their position. Do you understand what I'm saying? They don't get angry with the abusers. They get angry with the men who never abused. Because if you get angry with the abuser, you might get more abuse. Do you see? You get, if you get angry with a person who's already angry with you, there's a high likelihood they'll get angrier with you. If you get angry with a person who harms you, there's a high likelihood they'll harm you more. All right? So what they do when they pass in the spirit world is they don't harm the men that harm them. They go and find men who have never harmed a woman and they harm those men. And I see many people acting out this way on earth with regard to who they choose to harm. They often choose to harm the person who's the safest to harm for them from their own perspective. Does everyone get that? So for example, if there's a man who's a lovely man and he's quite considerate of women, he's safer to harm and yell at than a man who's abusive towards women on earth. Because if, if a woman yells at the man who's abusive, what will he do? He will probably abuse her more. So she doesn't yell at him. Do you see what I'm saying? She goes and finds a man that she can yell at who will accept her yelling at him. Now if that's not her male child, which it often can be, it will be a male who she sees as weak. Someone who's not going to abuse her. Does that make sense? So how I see people expressing their anger is often in this very gutless way. Right? They choose people they can victimise and get away with it. It's very rare for an angry person to choose another angry person to be angry with. And the reason why is that other person will get just as nasty with them as they have gotten with, them, with the other person, right? So they very rarely choose that. What they choose to do is get angry with a person who will accept the abuse. Right? And who will actually want to do what the abuser says. That's what they do. And this is how many of you actually use your anger. You don't even use it ethically. If you're ethical, you'd only get angry with the people who got angry with you. <laughs> That's more ethical. It's not complete ethics, because complete ethics would be, I would feel like I don't want to get angry with anyone because I don't want anyone to be angry with me. That, that would be complete ethics. But the majority of us, we don't have that kind of ethics. We have the kind of ethics as what they do to me, I'll do to them. But when it comes to anger, it's rare for the average person to even engage in that ethically. What they do is they get angry with the people who have not been angry with them. <laughs> Does that make sense? That's what they finish up doing. And, and we do this many, many times. And so even the way in which we use anger is addictive. See, we use anger in that way. We use anger towards a person who, is, who we feel is weaker than us so that we can feel stronger more easily. We can feel powerful more easily. If, if there was two people who were equal and they were equal in the way in which they were using anger, this person would feel angry with that person, but that person would get just as angry and there would be no power benefit. Does that make sense? But when there's one person who will accept the anger and the other person will dish it out, now there's a power benefit to the person who dishes out the anger, which is what they're aiming for. They want power and control over the other person. That's why we use anger. So many times we use anger towards a person who is actually weaker than ourselves or we, who we view as weaker than ourselves. Right? And that's what I see many of you doing with your anger. You're using your anger towards people who you believe you can get away with it with. Right? 